Well, welcome to 2021, everyone. It was kind of interesting year last year. Um, a lot of challenges, but from a, from perspective of the Agile HR Consortium that Steve and I developed as well as our class, it was a pretty good year for us. All things considered, uh, we're able to start our class. We're able to kind of evangelize introduction of Agile type of principles and practice in HR. Um, we started this journey about three years ago, realizing that uh, you know, we're all frustrated about the results we're getting in HR. Uh, we're working hard, but not really achieving the things we want. And uh, this year that was uh, exacerbated by the COVID-19 and, and racial political challenges that we had, um, making it tough for the HR leader. So we've been on a journey for, for a while just to see if agile principles could help, can they improve performance? And we'll have to report that uh, Agile HR continues to evolve, and, and we're seeing a dramatic difference in making in many HR functions. Yeah, that's true, Wayne. The, the year really started with the introduction of our Agile Leader graduate course at the University of Pennsylvania. And we, we, want, we realize that Agile principles need an element of leadership in order to make them work. So we took your discovery of EBITDA, E-B-I-T-T-D-A, principles and combined them with some contemporary research on leadership practices that we found in a great book called Strategic Doing. Uh, then we decided we needed to develop an ecosystem uh, comprised of students, faculty, consultants, and corporate leaders to help build the course, to really make it relevant to the purpose that we intended. We're very grateful for the tremendous support of the more than 75 corporate leaders like yourselves who helped us design the course and participated as speakers, coaches, and reviewers. We've taken all the learning from the course on the road to deliver what we call curtain raiser presentations or pilot programs, workshops, and discussions with HR leaders. And we've wound up in places like Australia, Japan, India, Europe, South America, and throughout the United States. So we've learned a lot along the way. Uh, and as we're about to begin the next iteration of our course, we wanted to share a couple of findings from the year that we're incorporating into the course. First, I think we learned the hard way how difficult it was to change the organizations. I mean, most of you are listening to this have I've been through that many times, sometimes successful more often than not. And so, you know, we realized that implementing something like Agile HR is no different. It's going to be a challenge. Um, so we figured out, you know, how can we really make this sustainable, whereas other change initiatives haven't really worked. And we realize that many of the common activities we do on a daily basis are really impediments to improvement. They're really kind of uh, demotivate and, and, and lower performance. Things like meetings and how we communicate with 35 page deck presentations and how we organize things really are counterproductive in many ways. And so we set our mind to how can we take some of the agile things we learn and, and fix those things. So we decided we kind of mimicked a couple of the key areas, key artifacts and rituals that we do in Agile and we adopted them to HR. And so things like how we meet, you know, those typical meetings you have like on a Monday morning where you have your staff and, you know, you uh, go through a litany of uh, assignments and review the things of last week that were never done. And then people go out and try to do the work and, and uh, they, um, you know, they come back next week and nothing is done. Well, you know, we simply decided let's let's focus on converting those meetings into what we call agile scrum sessions, 15 minute sessions where you ask a couple questions. Um, what did you do yesterday? What are you gonna do tomorrow? What's getting in your way? By asking those questions, we identify problems the next day. And then we, we identify potential solutions the following day. And so it's a much more efficient, effective way of, of solving problems. And it causes people to be more motivated, more productive. They're not frustrated because things aren't moving forward. And they see things happening. You know, it's, it's really, you can do twice the work in half the time um, and get a more productive, better outcome. I mean, we're, we're, we decided we need to pe meet people where they are. We need to take what they're doing already and just modify, it, mimic some agile practices that we can do that. Um, versus, you know, employing massive change transformation programs that rarely work. Yeah, but for me, Wayne, one of the things that has been a, a, a real point of discovery for me this year, uh, and I think it's important that uh, 
the people that we work with understand that there's a structure to what we're doing. It's not sort of making it up as you go along. One of the things that uh, was really revealing to me this year and has been a highlight of what we've been discovering the last couple of months is the four roles that seem to have emerged for us about how do you lead such efforts here. And maybe I'll just take a second mm -hmm. to just introduce what those four roles are because mm -hmm. they are now central to what it is that we're going to be teaching in our next class uh, starting in a couple of weeks. So the four roles are the agile leader as the person who decides what needs to be done, someone who's able to diagnose the situation and relate it to the kind of agile intervention that might be needed. It's a very unique skill and there are ways in which we think we can guide people to do that. The second is the agile leader as an agent of change. I think anybody who wants to take on agile work is engaging in some form of change initiative. And it's really important as a leader that you understand how change will be impacting in your organization. Not everybody in the organization views change in the same way that you do. As the advocate for change, you're renewed and you're excited about it, but you're leaving people in your wake. How do you understand the dynamics of all that and account for it and develop strategies to bring people along in the process of change in the organization? The third role is the implementer of action. This is probably the most involved in maybe the most complex of the roles, but it's a whole series of things that must go on. I sometimes equate it to the performer in the circus who's spinning the plates around the circus ring on sticks, right? And your job as the leader is to go around and whip up enthusiasm as, a, as one of the plates starts to teeter-totter. Your job is to go over there and whip it up with some energy and enthusiasm and bring it to life again. So there's a lot of work to be done as the implementer of change, not simply sitting back and watching. It's really about being engaged in the action. And finally is the, the, the leader as reflective learner. Uh, it's really, we've learned, I think, through the conversations that we've had with our clients, how important it is to stop the action every once in a while, look back and not just be driving your car through your rear view mirror only, but really looking ahead, what's, what's coming up, what's next, and being able to reflect upon the things that you've done is a critical skill. So those four roles for me, Wayne, have been really important findings for me this year. And I'm really excited to add that to our uh, class experience in the uh, in the next couple of months. So, and again, uh, we're st uh, starting up again on January 20th. Uh, class is going to start again, um, and we're committed to having the best, most relevant experience for the students. So, to achieve that, we're asking again for your participation this year, perhaps as a speaker, or we're going to do more case studies. Maybe a kind of advisor for case studies, or a reviewer of student activities. Um, we found the people last year found that you know you really learned as much as the students. So I'm going to be reaching out to you. Um, love to have you be involved. Uh, we're always again looking to keep it current and relevant. Um, if some things are going on in your organization you think might be helpful in terms of learning or lessons learned, let us know. But again, uh, this is going to be the first of a series of conversations. Steve and I are going to report back on what we've learned in the classroom and the corporate setting and with our pilot programs. Because as he said before, we're evangelists, we're passionate around agile in HR. We've seen that it can make a tremendous impact. And we want to kind of remove some of the stigma that it, it's, it's an IT focus um, because we've, we've developed differently. We've taken some IT principles, but modified them for HR and business leaders. So stay tuned and let's uh, hope for a fantastic 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much.